out a bogey at 3 o'clock. Please advise. Roger that. They're just here to learn about parallax scrolling. Have them follow you into base 101. We'll have them watch an instructional video. Over. Copy that. All right, gals and girls, follow us home. Hey, what's up, everybody? I've got a really quick tutorial, I hope. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, on parallax scrolling. This is for uh, one of my subscribers named Eli Mitchell 6147 He asked me, hey, I was wondering if you could help me figure out to fix the parallax effect or how to make the parallax effect. And for those of you who don't know, that basically just means how layers in your animation or artwork move in a different pace to give the illusion of depth. So I'm going to use a piece of artwork that you guys are really familiar with, I'm sure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and import it really quick. And you can see by the title what it is. I'm going to import every piece of, or every layer individually. And you can see... This is the very first stage of Super Mario. Um, I actually just got this piece of artwork from Spriter's Resource. Um, I just imported it from uh, Spriter's Resource into Photoshop. And because it's pixels, it's already really easy to separate. So this is just a big picture of the entire uh, level. And all I did was really quickly, um, I used the selection tool and because it's pixel to pixel it's really easy to select I can grab this artwork I can copy and paste and then I can use the selection tool to delete some of the unneeded pixels like the background and then I have my piece of artwork that I want on a different layer so turn that back on so you can see I have that pipe by itself and I can move that around and uh, mess with it. And that's basically all, all I did was cut out some of the clouds and the bushes and the mountains in the background for that. So that's what this is. You can see that I have a bunch of layers. I can turn off, let me zoom in real quick. I've got clouds separated so I can turn them off and on and I can adjust them. And what I'm gonna do really quick is they're all in the same folder so they can be moved around together. And on my vector layer, I'm gonna Underneath, I'm going to just make that the background. And I'll go ahead and hit S and add a shape. And I'm just going to have an autofill and a blue color for the background. So we have that iconic looking uh, sky in the background. But I also want to lock that in place so it doesn't move around. So if I move the, uh, like the camera or whatnot, I don't want the blue to move. So I'm going to double click the layer until I get into the properties or layer settings. And then I'm going to click immune to camera and hit apply and okay. So now if I move the camera, that blue just stays there. So it's, I can scroll this entire level and it moves together. So parallax scrolling is basically, this is, this is without parallax scrolling, which is what you're used to if you've played Super Mario. You know, you start here and let's say you wanted to animate this. We'll grab the camera and I'll make a keyframe. I'll just click somewhere on frame one, anywhere on the canvas to make a keyframe. I'll go to frame 144 and then I'm gonna hold shift down so it doesn't move up or down and just move it across. And then I'll uh, click on the first keyframe, right click it and do linear so it just moves at the same pace. And that's what you guys are used to seeing. It's just, that's no parallax scrolling. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of these elements and then just move them forward or backward in 3D space or Z space. There's X, Y, and Z coordinates, which is if you've done 3D modeling or anything like that, you know that the Z depth is how close or far something is. And X, Y is the left and right and up and down. So it's just easier for me to show you really quick. If I grab the orbit tool and turn this, you can see the artwork in that folder is flat. Everything is on the same level, basically. Let me zoom in. So if I turn it around, this is just the camera 
circling the artwork and you can see it's super flat. I'll reset the camera and to create a parallax effect, it's extremely simple to do. You just need to have different layers that you can affect. So let's say we want to take the clouds. Now I can click on this cloud or actually let me right click and control so I can make sure that I'm selecting the right one. So you can change it in two ways. If you want to make this closer or farther from the camera, you can just click up here in the Z axis and use your mouse wheel to go up or down. So if I'm scrolling upwards, it's actually pushing it forwards. So see how it's getting bigger? Um, and then we could put it down here so you can see it. So it's actually been pushed forward closer to the camera. So I've hit the orbit uh, camera again. Now if I spin around, you can see that cloud has actually been pushed forward closer to the camera, which is this little icon right here. And see how it's floating way farther ahead um, and, or in front of the rest of the artwork? That's because I pushed it in Z space. But what most people want to do is make the artwork the same size as it always looks because that looks that doesn't look like Super Mario anymore or you know the actual stage uh, with the, uh, the transform uh, layer tool now the other way to do this is to with the uh, transform layer tool selected hold down shift and alt and then left click and drag you got to hold down the click button and drag it forward or backwards or up and down and see now it's pushing it forwards and backwards but when I let go of the mouse button, it'll snap back into place, or it looks like it's snapping back into place, but what it's doing is resizing the artwork back to its original uh, size in the viewport. So I'll grab the orbit tool again, and I'll turn it, and you can see it did the same thing. It pushed it forward, but it actually resized it so it matches the size of the other clouds so it's it appears like it's on the same layer still. So it looks exactly the same, but if I move the camera now, if I grab this camera tool and move, you can see it's moving much faster if I move left and right. And that's because it's closer to the camera. It's the same effect that you see like if you're driving in a car and you look at the road next to you and it's moving really fast, but the mountains are moving really slow in the background. And that's pretty much all there is to it, is two simple steps. It is one, to have multiple layers so you can push the artwork forward or backwards in space. And then two, move the camera. So again, I'm going to go through it really fast. This is with all of the layers on the same uh, Z space axis, like that. And I'll go ahead, let's go ahead and grab some clouds and I'll just do different positions. So I'm going to right click alt, select this cloud, I'll hold down shift alt, left click and drag forward, let go and it snaps back, right click alt, grab this one, shift alt left click, I'll push this one back, right click alt to select this cloud, push this one, hold shift and alt down, push it way back and right click alt shift alt left click oops that's not what we wanted shift alt left click and drag why is it not working oh there we go uh let's do that forward a little bit and then let's select all of the mountains I'll hold shift down and grab all those mountains. I'm gonna push them back by holding shift alt, left click, drag upward. So they're pretty tiny and let go and they snap back. That means they're gonna be really far away. And then the bushes, let's go ahead and push those uh, forward some. So we'll go ahead and hold shift, select those layers, hold shift alt down, left click and drag upward or down to bring them closer a little bit like that and even though everything looks the same let's go ahead and move the camera again and see what that looks like let's zoom in too so we can get a better look and there we go parallax scrolling some of the clouds are moving at different rates because they're actually in different depths let's move that like that and the bushes are moving faster and that's it
I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you have any more questions, uh, be sure to leave them down in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Psych, I lied. What? Oh, come on, man. I still have to show you guys something. Um, after making that video, I decided to make that uh, jet intro, and I use a completely different type of parallax scrolling. If you can see right here, when I play this animation, it's just looping artwork, and it doesn't use Z-Depth. So I'm gonna show you really quick how I did that. I went to a website um, called Itch.io, which is a gaming marketplace where you can buy backgrounds for games, um, characters, music, all kinds of cool stuff. But I found this artwork here by a guy named Bong Sang, and sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but he has this pack of parallax scrolling artwork uh, that you can just donate. You can download it for free, but I donated some cash to him just because it's awesome. It's got, like, check out all these scenes, man. But it's basically just PNG artwork. I'll show you how to input that into Moho real quick. And this can be your own artwork. I just wanted to use something really quick to make quick intro. So I grabbed that artwork and I'm gonna go ahead and import some of his art. I'm just gonna skip the moon because I don't need that. And you can see it just imports directly into Moho. Um, I'm gonna rearrange this, uh, the layers, put the sky at the bottom, followed by the clouds, and then the mountains, and then the mid dunes and the front dunes. I'll go ahead and resize the artwork. Let me just turn some of these off. I'm gonna shrink this uh, sky down. Oops, make sure you're on frame zero when you do that. And I'm also gonna lock this layer. So I'm gonna say immune the camera and apply. Just so it doesn't move around when I move the camera or move the position. Um, clouds, I'm not going to uh, duplicate this artwork. You'll see here in just a second because I'm not gonna animate it that much. So I'm going to shrink it down, but I'm going to keep it a little bit lo longer than the uh, canvas. I'm just going to move it here. And actually, I'm just going to leave that for now. Let's hide that. And we'll do the desert mountain. So what I'm going to do here is let me move that artwork up a little bit and shrink it down some. Just about there. So this is what I'm going to do with the rest of the layers is what I'm going to do is make two copies of the artwork. And this art has been made tileable, which basically just means on the left and right, they match up together so you can continually pull them to the left or right and it looks like it's just uh, one continuous image. So I'm going to go on frame zero, I'll hit duplicate. I'm going to hold shift down, left click and drag this over to the left and line it up with the other piece of artwork. So see how it looks like it's just the same. It matches up right there, close enough. Not perfect, but it'll work. And oh, let's go ahead and select both of those pieces of artwork. I'm holding shift down and just clicking on both of them and then select group with selection. And now I can move those two pieces of artwork together because I just want to animate the folder. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to make sure it's overlapping the uh, canvas and then I'm going to go to frame one, click on it so it makes a keyframe and then I'm going to go to frame 48 and it doesn't matter what frame you go to on the second one. It's just we'll move the uh, keyframe to speed or slow down the uh, artwork. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to hold down shift, um, turn the onion skins on, and I, I have colored fills selected so I can see um, other frames. And what you have to do is click on this area between the numbers on the timeline and the keyframes and see how it made that little mark. Um, I have it on frame one. So that's showing kind of a little ghost image or a trace image. And I'm gonna left click, hold shift down and drag this image to the left and match back up with the first keyframe. And you can do that really easy by just 
overlapping the image, like right there. And then you have also have to left click on the first keyframe, right click on it, and then hit linear. And that way it just moves at a steady pace. And then we'll left click on the second keyframe and then right click and select cycle. And it's going to cycle to frame two automatically. So now if I turn the onion skin off for a second, you can see this just loops. And it just looks like a continuous landscape going by. And we'll go ahead and stretch this way out. Let's go ahead and pull this really far out. Let's say like 1500 frames or something. So it goes really slow. Or 1600, that's, that's fine. Just, you know, kind of a snail's pace because it's really far away. But then let's do the same thing for the next layers. it is oh we can even let me animate the um, clouds really quick so I got the clouds I'm just going to over go really far into the timeline let's just do like I don't know, 500 and then just move it over slightly like that. so it's actually gonna animate Zero. Can't even really see the clouds moving that much, but it's act they're actually moving too. And that's it. So um, if you have any other questions or comments about this type of parallax scrolling, just let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching.